Right now at six, the Quapaw Nation asks for more families to take care of children in the foster system. And we've got a beautiful looking start to the day, a little bit on the warm side out there. Another hot one ahead of us. We'll have a look at that forecast. Get you out the door coming up. Plus, prosecutors announced plans to file charges against a former police chief involved in a raid on a Kansas newspaper. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 6 a.m. I'm Elise Snowy. I'm Chris Warner. It's now Tuesday and here we are August the 6th already. Here we are. We're just cruising on into August, it feels like. Uh, well, yeah. the temperatures certainly feel like yes. August out there. Yes. That is for sure. It's uh, started to heat up on us and it's going to be another hot one today, unfortunately, but yeah. we'll do have a little relief on the way later okay. in the week, which is good. Absolutely. I mean, hopefully that relief still shows up, but it's looking pretty good for us right now. Got a decent system coming in this weekend. But we got to get through today and tomorrow, you know, before we get to the weekend. <laughs> so let's start with today, and we're going to start with a live look from our camera on the Cornell Complex in downtown Joplin. Sun's starting to slowly rise out there. Got some nice colors to the sky. Looks pretty good, but again, it is a bit of a warm start. Another view of that sunrise from our camera, 7th and Range Line. See how the colors are different between those two cameras? It's always interesting, but I, I, I'm telling you, this one gets some pretty good uh, coloring in the sky. I don't know if it's posi if it's its position where it's at, whatever the case may be. And we're looking pretty good. Modoc camera 32nd and range line in Joplin as well. Starting to get our day underway. We do have heat advisories in the parts of northeastern Oklahoma through nine o'clock tonight. As we mentioned, it's going to be hot today. I also want to mention something else. If you are along in north of 54, there's a reasonable chance you may not be nearly as hot as your neighbors. I'm talking low 90s for your highs before the cold air or well the, the dry air gets in here and cools you back a little bit. So you see by noon winds are beginning to shift for most of us, but if you're 54 north, winds are already shifting out of the north, and so that will allow you to not heat up as much. But for the majority of our area south of 54, we're still looking at highs today, upper 90s and even some lower 100s, maybe a few clouds here or there. But as we go through the day and into the after, late afternoon and evening, the winds will shift out of the north for everybody, and that will allow us to cool down a bit tonight. Sitting at 74 in Joplin right now, 73 in Pittsburgh. And as we look at temperatures across the area, we have some cool spots. We got some warm spots. We got upper 60s uh, for Anderson, Grove, and Jay. And then the majority of us, low mid 70s. I mean, look at Chanute up to 78 now. So we do have some upper 70s out there. An uncomfortable start to the day for some. Sunny skies through the afternoon and evening. And again, we'll have uh, maybe a passing cloud or two. Most of us, again, highs, upper 90s, lower 100s out there. We have that dry drier air coming in. We're going to cool back significantly tonight. Still a couple of warm days out there and then some relief on the way. We'll look at all that in the full forecast here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, today is primary election day for Kansas and Missouri. Voters in both states will cast their ballots as they decide on key races, including state and local offices, as well as some tax issues. Polls in Missouri are now open. Amber Jenkins joins us live in Joplin with the latest. Good morning, Amber. Good morning. Election day is underway for Missouri polls and polling locations like Villas Heights Christian Church opened their doors at 6 a.m. and they're already getting voters in and out. Important to know if you are in line at 7 o'clock, then you will be allowed to vote no matter how many people are in front of you. When heading to the polls, remember to bring your ID and leave any political attire at home. Elise, back to you. All right, thanks, Amber. And you'll, of course, be able to see results as they come in on our website, koemnewsnow.com. The Peoria County, Illinois coroner releases the cause of death of Sydney Watson, a Carl Junction eight-year-old who died on a flight to Chicago. The flight diverted to Peoria, Illinois due to the little girl's medical complications. The coroner has now determined she died from complications from multiple infections, which they say suggest an underlying autoimmune disorder. Two special prosecutors say they plan to charge a former Central Kansas police op chief over his conduct following a raid last year on his town's newspaper. It stands from an August 2023 police raid on the Marion County record and the home of its publisher. Prosecutors say former Marion Police Chief Gideon Cody obstructed justice by withholding information from investigators 
Authorities also say the newspaper and its staff committed no crimes. Well, now you can stay up to date with the latest news, weather and sports with the KOM Plus TV streaming app. It's available on Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV Plus and Roku. The player is also available on our news and weather apps as well as our website. Watch live streaming anytime absolutely free. The KOM Plus TV streaming app. Aquapa Nation is in dire need of foster parents for children. Chris Millard is the Indian Child Welfare Director for Quapa Nation and says they are having an extra hard time finding a home for teenage children. The Quapa Nation is looking for tribal foster parents that will help kids with their mental health journey and keep them connected to their culture. A lot of the kids that we see that are teenagers have really seen a lot of trauma and have been through a lot and they really haven't had someone there to kind of help them figure out how to deal with those traumas. So when we're looking at homes, that's what we really want. Willard says it's very rewarding for foster parents to see the growth of their foster child. Potential foster parents must be at least 21 and complete a home study before they accept the child into their home. Well, staff at the Miners Hall Museum hope with the help of a federal program, they can not only showcase history, but preserve it. The museum was recently accepted into the Collection Assessment for Preservation Program, also known as CAPS. The program helps different sites learn what steps they can do to improve their preservation efforts. The museum is one of just 14 locations receiving data loggers, which will tell them what changes need to be made to the site. According to museum staff, the acceptance into the program couldn't have come at a better time as they hope to expand the site. So Dream Big has always been one of our um, founding principles, I guess. We always think we have to dream big. And when we saw this grant come up, we thought this would be perfect for us since we are intending to grow soon. The Miners Hall Museum staff say they hope to receive a final report on the results of the program in the beginning of next year. And that's a look at this morning's top stories in weather in our first seven minutes. Coming up on the KOAM Morning News. CrowdStrike is firing back at Delta after the airline's CEO lashed out at the cybersecurity firm. Plus, Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign is expected to officially announce her running mate sometime this morning. And Chris Warner returns with another look at your Tuesday forecast. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back. Topping Nation Watch this morning. Charger access has been a sore point among electric vehicle owners for years, but it's getting worse as the numbers of EVs on the road increase. Plus, there are charger hogs who stay plugged in until they're at 100% causing backup at stations. The issue is charging speeds slow down once a car is about 80% full to avoid damaging the battery. That's why Electrify America, one of America's biggest charging companies, is experimenting with a solution to avoid slow and unpleasant travel in an EV. At 10 of the busiest fast charging stations in California, it has enacted a strict limit. Once a car's battery is 85% charged, charging will automatically stop. The driver can leave and find a different charge or face an additional 40% per minute idle time fee for taking the space. A well, crowd strike is firing back at Delta after the airline CEO lashed out at the cybersecurity firm for costing it hundreds of millions of dollars. A CrowdStrike flawed software update on July 19th caused widespread computer outages at Delta and hundreds of other companies around the globe. Delta is threatening public litigation and accuses CrowdStrike of not helping during the meltdown. But in the letter, CrowdStrike's legal counsel rejected any allegations that the company was, quote, grossly negligent or committed willful misconduct. The cybersecurity firm says Delta ignored its offers of assistance while other airlines were able to restore operations faster. Meanwhile, Delta was forced to cancel about 30% of its schedule over five days, stranding about 
500,000 passengers. Delta has yet to formally file a lawsuit. Well, Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign is expected to officially announce her running mate sometime this morning. It's the vice president's first big move since locking in the Democratic nomination following President Biden's historic decision to drop out of the race. Jared Hill reports from New York. This morning, Vice President Kamala Harris is walking into one of the biggest days of her campaign as the official Democratic presidential nominee. Monday night, Democratic delegates voted to make her the first woman of color to lead a major party ticket. Now Harris and her yet-to-be-named running mate are about to set off on a tour of seven battleground states, starting in Pennsylvania. Over the weekend, Harris met with key contenders, including Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, and Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro. People weighed in at the state fair in Swing State, Wisconsin. All the individuals that have been listed are great choices. Um, I wish it could be Pete um, Buttigieg, but this country is not ready for that just yet. Some think the choice won't impact the outcome in November. I think Democrats are going to vote Democratic and Republicans are going to vote Republican no matter who the candidate is, it appears that way with the candidates we have. In an interview with YouTuber Aiden Ross, former President Donald Trump commented on the potential pick with an attack on Harris. All of the people that she's looking at are considered much better than her. These were people that were thinking about running. They would have run. The latest CBS News poll finds Harris and Trump essentially tied across battleground states as well as nationally. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. Following the former president's live stream interview, the Harris campaign released a statement saying in part, quote, while Trump is doing everything he can to drag us backwards, Kamala Harris is fighting for our futures. It's why young voters will send her to the White House this November. And that's a look at some of today's top national stories. Here's Chris with a look at your forecast. Yeah, we've got another hot day across the area out there. Unfortunately, Skywatch storm tracker is clear for the moment. Well, it's back up over there. See it? There's nothing on it. We were going to have another full look at your forecast. We're going to talk about some drier air that's moving in and a little bit of a relief from the heat this weekend in the full forecast. And that's coming up here in just a few more minutes. Well, a group of volunteers diving into Arizona's Salt River, cleaning up more than 9,000 pounds of trash. Nicole Crossing reports. Arizona's Salt River has a lot to offer for people seeking cool relief from the blistering heat. But while the river gives, it also can take away as items get lost during tubing or kayaking trips. That's where the Salty Scuba Squad comes in. It's been a really heartwarming adventure. The group dives multiple times a week, helping to clean up the waterway and retrieve lost items. Keys, wallets, um, watches, Apple watches, things like that. GoPros, um, and then of course the garbage. Since April, Salty Scuba Squad volunteers have collected over 9,200 pounds of trash and over 100 phones, including one belonging to Michelle Ballard, who lost it during a trip weeks ago. We were fine, it was nice and relaxing, and then we figured this is a good spot to get out and stretch. And that was my mistake because I got too comfortable. We got caught up in a crowd of people lost the cooler and everything and I just felt like my whole world just died. <laughs> she came to pick up her phone today from the squad who got a hold of her using her emergency contacts. I'm so grateful for you guys because as soon as I knew that you had my phone, my worries just went away. The squad currently has 21 phones whose owners they're trying to identify. As for the group's conservation goals, those are simple. Arizona water's cleaner. For sure. I, we hope to be able to show people that are coming down the river and they see all the trash on the board like, oh man, I better help with that and for them to carry that mission on and pick up after themselves. Now here's Chris with a quick look at your forecast. Yeah, we got another hot day across the area for us. We're going to talk about that forecast. Uh, some northerly winds, drier air and rain chances all on the way when the KOAM Morning News returns. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 621 now on this Tuesday morning. We're going to start with the future track. So by this afternoon, we are going to be looking at winds beginning to shift for us progressively across the area. However, 
that because of the wind shift and when it'll take place, it's looking as though if you're along and north of Highway 54, you may not get nearly as hot as your neighbors to the south. You may only make the low 90s before the dry air works in, the north wind works in, and your temperatures won't plummet or anything, but you may limit how hot you get today compared to everyone else. Now, if you're south of 54, yeah, be prepared for a relatively uncomfortable day as we end the afternoon. We're looking at highs south of 54, upper 90s, and even some lower 100s hundreds across the area, but as we go later into the day, all of us will progressively get into those north winds and as that wind shift line sinks further south, we're going to improve and if you notice some of these temperatures tonight, they will almost plummet in a way. We're going to go from around 80 degrees or so at 10 o'clock down into the mid upper 60s uh, as we head into the evening hours out there and they're going to fall pretty quickly, so it's going to be pretty pleasant for our Wednesday. Our average low about 69. We're well above that now and we will be below that tonight. Now Wednesday still looks to be hot, but it's a slower warm up by noon. We're upper 70s and low 80s, so not too bad at the noon hour. We won't reach our highs again till peak heating later in the afternoon, or early evening. And that's where we could go upper 80s and low 90s. We go into our Thursday, a similar situation. However, one key difference here. We're looking at maybe some showers and storms in the first half of our Thursday. By about noon, those will be done, but these will be isolated to widely scattered, so not everybody will see rain, but we will get some cloud cover. We'll see those showers and storms, and that could keep some of us initially from warming up too much. Unfortunately, since they'll be out by noon, and of course in the summertime, we don't reach our peak heating till later in the day. We're still looking at many of us going low mid 90s for our highs on our Thursday. We go into Friday. We're going to look at a similar repeat situation of some sours and storms, but temperatures much cooler. We'll talk about that in a moment. We have heat advisories through nine o'clock this evening into northeastern Oklahoma it does not include Delaware County, but everyone else uh, and it'd be because it's going to be hot. It, you know, it's just it's going to be hot. That's how it is today. It is the summertime. It is August 74 in Joplin. Dew point humidity both still up there. Wind is still out of the south southwest at five. And again, the humidity levels begin to drop once we get behind this boundary later today. Temperatures around the region a good smattering. We've got some upper 60s down to the south. We've got some low to mid 70s and then out west. Uh, Chanute has been one of the warm spots this morning going into the upper 70s out there. So a warm start for many of us. Sunny skies this morning about 90 by 11 o'clock. Highs today for the majority of us upper 90s, lower 100s with maybe a passing cloud here or there, similar to what we saw yesterday. We go into the evening again. We're slow to cool down, down to about 80 by 10. But with that drier air working in, temperatures fall pretty quick tonight. Eventually, back into the uh, mid to upper 60s, low mid 90s tomorrow, low mid 90s Thursday for most of us, and then a little cooler. Some morning showers, maybe a couple of storms Friday. Highs mid upper 80s and mid upper 80s continue into the weekend. We'll go low 90s next week and take a look. We've got additional shower and thunderstorm chances out there. That's check your forecast and toss it over to Lisa now with Health Watch. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, it's difficult to correctly identify pneumonia at the time a person is hospitalized. According to a study by the University of Utah Health, a pneumonia diagnosis will change more than half the time either because doctors will reverse an initial diagnosis or because doctors missed it at the time of admission. Researchers say the issue doctors have is that symptoms often overlap with other diagnoses that can mimic pneumonia. Well, it's common sense that eating fruits and vegetables is good for you, and a new study in the American Journal of Medicine highlights specific benefits for patients with hypertension. In a five-year trial, patients who ate more fruits and vegetables had lower blood pressure and improved kidney and heart health. Researchers say fighting hypertension should begin with a diet change before drugs are introduced. Cancer screenings in the U.S. cost $43 billion every year, according to the National Institutes of Health. Colorectal cancer represented more than 60% of the total cost. Study authors say the amount is substantial, but early detection is key to saving lives and lowering treatment costs. Well, while you're trying to beat the heat this summer, animal experts say so are rattlesnakes. Kids and adults get some tips on how to stay safe this summer while sharing the desert with some notorious creatures. Irene Snyder has more on this story. The more you learn, the more you know, the safer you are, the more fun you'll have. 
kids and adults alike getting an up-close look this weekend at desert creatures. They're certainly not all warm and fuzzy, and this rattlesnake is not something you'd want to see cross your path in the wild. If you underestimate any of that, you're going to end up in trouble. Uh, and we're trying to teach the kids, and we're the adults as well, don't forget the adults. We're trying to teach everybody just to enjoy the desert, but think of what you're doing before you go out there. Uh, there's a lot of things that can hurt you, but you can have a lot of fun at the same time. ER nurse Mark Hindle with Rattlesnake Garage knows quite a lot about these often feared snakes. He says in the wild, they're generally more afraid of us than we will ever be of them. You're more likely to suffer from the heat than a rattlesnake bite, but you always want to be aware and look at your surroundings. Any of the creatures in the desert, they're just like us. They're trying to get away from the heat. They're t looking for shade. So whenever you go outside, before you touch anything, always look. Park rangers echo that call for more situational awareness, leaving creatures be in the wild. We don't know what it is. Uh, the animals need to be left alone to do their thing. Better to observe, take pictures, things like that. Uh, when it comes to encountering things like rattlesnakes. At the end of the day, educating the public about the potential dangers can help keep the people and wildlife safe. A lot of fears and things like that. And again, I think the more that you educate people, kids in particular, um, knowledge is great. So when you know what's out there, know what to respect and, and you, should, you know, you can be more safe that way and enjoy your experience a lot more. Now to look at some of today's top health stories. We'll be right back. Right now at 630, students and parents in Carthage get a chance to learn about the district's bus routes and procedures. And we've got another hot and sunny day for most of us out there. We do have some relief on the way. Take a look at that forecast though to get you out the door coming up. Plus, the Pittsburgh High School Marching Band is feeling the music as they kick off band camp. We'll take you there. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOM Morning News. It's 630. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner. It's now Tuesday. It is August the 6th and here we are. And yes. here it is. Another hot day out there. It's also <sighs> election day. It is election day, yes. Polls in Missouri are already open, and the Kansas polls will open at 7 a.m., and they will be open until 7 p.m. as well. Yeah, so yeah. make sure you take time, get out there, vote, Absolutely. make your voice heard. Very important, too. So. Make sure you stay hydrated if you're going out yes. to vote, especially <laughs> later this afternoon, where it's really going to start to heat up for many of us across the area. Right now, already warm for some of us, too, as we get this day underway. Live look from our camera at 7th and Range Line in Joplin. Looking pretty good so far. Clear skies out there. Clear skies from the MoDOT camera, 32nd and Range Line as well. And as we take a look at the heat alerts, we do have some heat advisories into northeastern Oklahoma, excluding Delaware County through 9 o'clock this evening. It was going to be hot today. We knew that was going to be a thing. Uh, not surprised we're getting some heat advisories because traditionally the further south or west you go in at least in our viewing area, the hotter it tends to get. So even if you're not under heat advisory, though, don't think that don't think that that means it's not going to be hot where you are. Here's what we're looking at, and this is where we're going to get this interesting dividing line here. By noon, winds are beginning to shift. So at noon, you can see right almost right along in north of Highway 54, winds are already out of the north. So some of you up there may not get nearly as hot as your neighbors to the south, only going maybe low 90s before that drier air kicks in and it, it's still hot, but it limits how hot it'll get in the northern portion of our area. 90% of us, though, unfortunately, is still going to be uncomfortably hot as we go into the upper 90s and lower 100s later today, but gradually all of us getting in on those north winds. It is 74 in Joplin right now, 72 in Pittsburgh. Average low is 69. Many of us above that right now. Cool off to the south. Grove, J. Anderson, the Osho into the upper 60s. The rest of us low mid 70s and Chanute as the warm spot at 78 degrees. Again, highs today, upper 90s, lower 100s for most of us and we'll have those sunny skies, maybe just a few clouds here and there like we saw yesterday across the area. Those north winds again, they don't bring in significantly cold air by any means, but they will dry things out. And then we're looking at some rain chances and even cooler temperatures by the weekend. We'll break down those details in the full forecast. That's coming up here in just a few more minutes. Lisa. All right, thanks, Chris. It's election day for Kansas and Missouri and polls in Missouri have opened. Voters in the show me state will decide primary elections featuring key state and local races. Amber Jenkins joins us live from Villas Heights Christian Church in Joplin with more Amber. Good morning. According to the Jasper County election clerk, 
This election is full of races ranging from county to statewide, but also Missouri voters will decide on two constitutional changes. One uh, exempts child care facilities from property tax and one that uh, requires the uh, city of Kansas City spend at least 25% of their budget on law enforcement. Missouri polling locations are set to be open until 7 tonight. Elise, back to you. All right, Amber, thanks. And you can find out what's on your ballot on koemnewsnow.com slash elections. Well, the school year is about to begin again, which means school buses will soon become a regular sight in traffic. Students and parents in Carthage will get a chance to learn about the district's bus routes and procedures today. The school bus information night will also include a bus tour, a safety lesson on and around the bus, and a meeting with the district's transportation team. It's important because uh, I know that the younger kids um, leaving home for maybe the first time, uh, it's got to be a little bit uh, scary for them. Um, so if we can do anything to get them a little bit comfortable, that's what we're going to shoot for. The event will run from 4 to 7 p.m. today at the Carthage High School Commons and is available to all students in the district and their parents. Well, Kansans, now is the time for your voice to be heard in regards to the look of your license plate. The Kansas Department of Revenue opened its voting on new personalized license plate designs. There are five distinctive design options for Kansans to select from. Voting is open until Friday at 5 p.m. You can find a link to the poll on our website. That's koamnewsnow.com. All well, student musicians are also preparing for the upcoming school year. Pittsburgh High School is hosting a camp for its marching band. Yesterday, they practiced at Hutchfield near Pittsburgh Community Middle School. The PHS band camp runs through Friday, which is capped off with a performance for parents at 5.30 p.m. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOA Morning News. A federal judge ruled that Google has been operating as an illegal monopoly and it's using its search engine to crush competition. And we have another hot and sunny day today. We'll have what to expect with Chris Warner in the Skywatch Weather Center. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back. In Consumer Watch this morning, payment apps are quick and convenient when you want to make or receive a payment. They're also vulnerable to scams. A group of lawmakers wants to help protect consumers. Jen Sullivan looks at ways to protect yourself from falling victim and the changes these lawmakers want to make. PayPal, Venmo, Zelle, they're all highly popular apps to send and receive money digitally. But these apps, while convenient, are also an easy target for scams. And last year alone, consumers reported losing $210 million to scammers on payment apps. That's 62% more than two years ago. Here's an email one consumer recently was sent. It looks like a legitimate receipt from PayPal. And if you call the number at the top, you are connected to someone claiming to be a customer service agent. But this is a scam. They are going to walk you through a process that's going to mirror how you legitimately tied these accounts together but they're going to be collecting all of that information, your financial information, your user uh, name and password. Here's how you can tell. First, the email says your Visa debit card ending in XXXX. There's not actual numbers. Also, look at who's sending the message. Call your bank to confirm if those charges are there. The scammers are banking on you panicking and reaching out immediately without thinking. While some payment apps offer protections, existing laws don't require banks to reimburse customers who authorize transactions to scammers. But a group of Democratic lawmakers are hoping to change that. During a hearing last month, they asked leaders of some of the biggest banks about these scams and want to see them do more to protect consumers. If you're reimbursing, then you have a financial incentive to impose stronger measures. They've introduced a new bill that would protect consumers who are defrauded when they make payments to scam artists on platforms like Zelle and Venmo. For Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. A federal judge ruled that Google has been operating as an illegal monopoly and exploiting its widely used search engine to crush competition. 
This included paying cell phone makers like Apple and Samsung to make Google their default search engine. The judge will decide what changes and penalties should be imposed. Google and its parent company Alphabet plan to appeal. Well, a new annual report finds Medicare and Social Security are on track to go broke later than previously forecast. Medicare's go broke date for its hospital insurance trust fund was pushed back five years to 2036. And the study shows Social Security's trust funds will stop being able to pay full benefits beginning in 2035. That's one year later than the last report indicated. And today you can cool down and satisfy your sweet tooth with a free root beer float at an A&W restaurants nationwide. There is no purchase necessary for the annual promotion. Just show off your float flex, your best muscle flexing pose and customers are also asked for a suggested donation to the nonprofit Disabled American Veterans. The offer is available between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. local time and it'll be served in a frosty glass mug. Well, it looks like this could be a better day for your retirement account. After hours in international trading show the markets might be bouncing back. That's after the Dow fell more than a thousand points yesterday. Some investors think the Federal Reserve has kept interest rates too high for too long. They're worried about a recession. Now, a Fed Bank president is addressing those concerns, as Amy Kiley reports. Everything is always on the table, whether that's increases, cuts, etc. The Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago president is trying to reassure investors after recession fears caused days of market chaos. But don't expect an emergency meeting to cut rates. He says it's not the panel's job to pump up the stock market. The Fed's job is very straightforward. Maximize employment, stabilize prices, and maintain financial stability. If the conditions collectively start coming in that on the through line, th there's deterioration on any of those parts, we're going to fix it. In fact, the whole point of keeping interest rates high is to cool the economy to bring down inflation. And this is to be expected. This was entirely predictable. Bearing in mind we had 11 increases in interest rates in barely two years, a phenomenal amount of tightening. It crushed inflation exactly as it was supposed to. But then, of course, you've got the other side. Eventually, unemployment starts to rise. That's why Friday's report of a 0.2 percentage point unemployment increase matters. Right now, the GDP indicates a pretty good economy. The Fed is trying to time rate cuts just right to reduce inflation without causing a recession. Has the Fed left it too late? The consensus is probably yes. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. The Fed has another meeting scheduled for about six weeks from now, and it could cut rates then. Meanwhile, AI investments are also shaking the markets. And that's it for Consumer Watch. Here's Chris with another look at your forecast. Yeah, we got a pretty warm start to the day out there already for some of us, and it's going to be another hot one for most of us. Quick look outside from our camera, top of the Cornell Complex, downtown Joplin. Got the sun rising out there, a little bit of haze here and there. Great view of the sunrise also from our camera at 7th and range line. We'll head a little further south. 32nd and range line clear skies as we get the day started. Folks getting their commute underway this morning. We do have heat advisories in the northeastern Oklahoma through 9 o'clock this evening. Because as mentioned, we knew it was going to get hot today. And of course, the further south and west you go to in our area, the hotter it tends to be. All right, so by noon, though, we've got the wind shift line already taking place. So because of that, Along and north of Highway 54, you'll be in those northerly winds a little earlier. Now, this isn't bringing in cold air by any means, but it's bringing in that drier air. So up north here, you may not make it out of the low 90s for highs. You'll be a little cooler than the rest of us. Meanwhile, everyone else still looking to make mid upper, sorry, upper 90s, maybe even lower 100s out there for our highs today before that wind shift pushes all the way through. And we get northerly winds back behind that with that drier air. We do have some rain chances on the way, some cooler temperatures on the way. We're going to take a look at that in the full forecast here in just a moment. We are also going to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. Those, of course, up after this break. But first, let's see what's happening on CBS Mornings. I'm Jerika Duncan coming up on CBS Mornings. Former Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi will be here in studio to talk about her illustrious career and, of course, the upcoming presidential election. That's coming up. 
on CBS Mornings. All right, time for some Tuesday birthdays here in the four states. We're going to start in Nevada with Josiah Hallam celebrating birthday number four. with birthday love coming from mom and dad. And over in us, we go a happy sixth birthday to Macy's Wallen. And in, we've got Jakari Harris celebrating birthday number eight. Happy birthday, Jakari. And over in St. Paul, a happy 10th birthday to Caden Westoff. And in Coffeyville, Carson Whitworth celebrating birthday number 14 with birthday love coming from your Mimi. And happy 15th birthday to William Bishop over in Pittsburgh. Also in Pittsburgh, Kent Brumbaugh celebrating another year wiser, birthday number 64. And over in Columbus, a happy birthday to Michelle Hamilton. All right, another fantastic yes. list of birthdays and anniversaries. And there's one that I did not get a picture in for, but I've got to mention because it happened last Friday mm -hmm. and I didn't forget. I just didn't get it in in time. Yeah. Our middle child, Colt, <laughs> celebrating birthday number 11 Ooh, last Friday. And he's been asking me all through the weekend, are you going to say it? Are you going to say it? Are you going to say it? <laughs> so I told him, I said, all right, I will say it. I, I to him, it's a huge deal, because, and I'll tell you why. It's because we post these things on YouTube. Oh, yes. And YouTube's a big deal to these yeah, kids. you got to be YouTube famous, and so that's the most important thing. So a happy belated birthday to Cole celebrating number 11. <laughs> if you would like to celebrate with us and ensure that your photo is not missed, Elise has that information yes, for you. Go ahead and submit your birthdays and anniversaries to birthdays at koamnewsnow.com. Be sure to include those photos and birthday messages and to meet the deadline that you see there at the bottom of your screen. Also essential information. You know what else is essential information? The weather for the day. You got to get ready. You're probably getting ready right now. You're going, all right, what do I need to wear today? Well, you're going to want to dress comfortably because it's going to be hot, especially for voting. Polls open in Missouri, Kansas. They open here in about 11, 10 minutes, sorry, 10 minutes and 35 seconds. Make sure you dress comfortably today. All right, live look from our camera, seven, or downtown Joplin and the Cornell Complex, so 7th and Joplin. Looking pretty good. Got some haze out there, giving the sun an interesting appearance in the sky from the camera's perspective. You have to remember, cameras see things a little differently than we do. Our camera, 7th and range line, the sun is hiding back behind the trees, but you can still see that same kind of glow occurring outside around it, thanks to some of that haze out there. Modoc camera, 32nd and range line, clear skies across the region, and we'll head across state lines to Kansas, 69, Kansas crossing, the KDOT camera there, looking good as well. Folks heading out, getting their day underway, driving safely, I presume. Zoom, I certainly hope it is essential that you drive safely so you get where you're going. You want to make sure you get where you're going. All right. By noon, we talked about this just a couple minutes ago, but a reminder, we got the wind shift starting to take place. Long and north of 54, north winds are already in place. It doesn't mean cold air, unfortunately, but it does mean drier air, and that may cap you all out into the low 90s for your highs, where all your neighbors to the south, as you can see even by noon, look further south here, are going to be pretty darn toasty. We're looking most of us highs, upper 90s, and lower 100s as we head into the afternoon. Here's that wind shift line now, uh, getting uh, crossing south into Arkansas and the southern edges of our coverage area into Oklahoma. And that northerly breeze kicking in across the rest of the area. It's bringing in drier air. It's not going to bring in cold air, unfortunately. But did you see how fast these numbers drop overnight? Once we get past, I'll say 11 o'clock midnight, that dry air allows us to cool back pretty nicely. We're going to fall back for the most part mid upper 60s and some low 60s possible too. Our average low 69. So a nice cool evening. Now tomorrow and Thursday still hot, but. Thanks to the drier air, we're a little slower to warm. So by noon, we're upper 70s, low 80s. Still looking at highs, low mid 90s for most of us as we head into our Wednesday. Then as we go into Thursday in the morning, the first half of our Thursday, some of us could see a few isolated to widely scattered shower and thunderstorm chances. So here we are at 7. And again, these will be isolated to widely scattered. Not everyone will see rain. It will keep temperatures down initially in the first part of the day. Unfortunately, once they clear out, temperatures heat back up. Many of us back into the low to mid 90s for our Thursday. We could see another round of rain on our Friday morning as well. And don't forget heat advisories northeastern Oklahoma until nine o'clock this evening because you know the further south and west you go in our area, the hotter it tends to get. And you guys could be pretty toasty. Heat index values 105 uh, to 110 possible. We're going to have another look at your forecast and the news you need to know in just a moment. And when we switch over to Fox 14 at 7 a.m., a California blacksmith is using his talents 
to help stop gun violence by turning surrendered weapons into gardening tools. Here's a check of today's top headlines, the news you need to know before you head out the door. Today is election day for Kansas and Missouri. Voters in both states will decide primary elections featuring a variety of races, including state and local offices, as well as some tax issues. Polling places in Missouri open at 6 a.m. and will remain open until 7 p.m. In Kansas, they will open at 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You'll be able to find results as they come in on our website, koemnewsnow.com. Lavioria County, Illinois coroner releases the cause of death of Sidney Watson. At Carl Junction 8 rules who died on a flight to Chicago. The coroner has now determined she died from complications from multiple infections, which they say suggest an underlying autoimmune disorder. Guapa Nation is in dire need of foster parents for children. Guapa Nation is looking for tribal foster parents that will help kids with their mental health journey and keep them connected to their culture. Potential foster parents must be at least 21 and complete a home study before they accept the child into their home. And that's a check of today's top headlines. The news you need to know before you head out the door. And we've got ourselves another hot one. Most of us going upper 90s, low 100s out there. Heat advisories in the northeastern Oklahoma through 9 tonight. Sunny skies, winds will be shifting out of the north progressively through the day. And that'll bring in drier air. And behind that, though, we're still a little warm initially. Still 80 by 10. But then after midnight, temperatures will fall a bit below average for most of us. Mid-upper 60s for our lows. Still low mid-90s on our Wednesday and hot and sunny out there. We're going to go low mid-90s Thursday maybe a few morning showers and storms and then we start to cool back a few morning showers Friday. We're still looking at upper 80s across the region heading into the weekend. We'll go back to the low 90s next week with at least some isolated to scattered thunderstorm chances Monday through Thursday. So some more much needed rain on the way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, coming up today at noon, we're making sizzling home fries in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. And your morning news continues on KOM with CBS Mornings. A judge ruled that Google illegally maintains a monopoly over Internet searches. Coming up on CBS Mornings, Jolene Kent explains how the landmark ruling could change the way we use the Internet. Or you can switch on over with us on Fox 14, where your only local morning news continues. This morning, Gina Langston of the Joplin School District joins us in the studio to talk about their upcoming health benefits and retail therapy fair. Plus, Charlene Patton also joining the studio with another incredible recipe. However, that is going to wrap it up for us for now. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning with election results at 5 a.m. And we'll see you today at noon.